There's a lot of excitement in the guitar world today. The new Epiphone Les Paul Greeny drops, isn't it? Yeah, the Epiphone Les Paul Greeny, of course, is the affordable version. Alas, I shan't be buying one because it's it's too many spondulas. So this is my greenie, sub one thousand pound greenie. This is what you can get. Well, there's an alternative, isn't it? Open book headstock with the correct truss rod cover. This is a fantastic guitar. Hello, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. There's a lot of excitement in the guitar world today. Today being Tuesday the 21st of November, and today's the day, apparently, that the new Epiphone Les Paul Greeny drops, isn't it? Widely anticipated throughout the world, talked about, teased on Instagram, it's happening. Yeah, the Epiphone Les Paul Greeny, of course, is the affordable version. I'm laughing because it's going to be, uh, as, well, as yet to be confirmed, but it's going to be 1,500 quid, isn't it, in the UK? $1,500 in the US. To me, that's not affordable, and that means that, alas, I shan't be buying one because it's, it's too many spondulies. There's a lot of guitars that you can buy for that amount of money, and recently I've made my views well known on the subject, having spent, well, I spent big money on a couple of Epiphones, and it didn't feel right for me, let's just say that. So I ain't getting one, but what a brilliant opportunity for me to roll out and do a proper review of my own sub $1,000 greenie if you like, this. It's my stoner. It's my stoner Les Paul. Stoner being the brand on the headstock here, on the open book headstock, have you noted, with the correct truss rod cover, have you noted? Yeah, this is my, um, this is my stoner. This is a handmade guitar, hand, well, sorry, hand assembled, shall we say, from I believe from parts throughout the world, made in the Netherlands by a Dutch company called Vox Humana, who have a guitar workshop and guitar supplies company. I'll put a link in the description box. We'll talk more about that later. That's what their website looks like. This is my stoner, Les Paul, which I think looks a lot like the old greenie. Few modifications perhaps needed, you know, Knobs are not quite right. Pickup covers are not quite right. But it looks the part, doesn't it? So what we're going to do today is we're going to review this. Sub £1,000 greenie. This is what you can get. Well, this is an alternative, isn't it? This is an alternative if you can get them to make you one. I'm sure there's lots of other alternatives out there. We're going to have a look at mine today. We're going to take it apart, do all the weights and measures, plug it in and, and hear it, okay, in anger. So... If you're in a hurry, don't forget, timestamps are in the description box. Got a little bit of time on your hands. Probably about 40 minutes, because I do tend to go on a little bit. Go and put the kettle on, or get yourself a drink and some snacks and come back and join me. And let's have a, let's have a closer look at this thing, because I'll tell you right now, this is a fantastic guitar. So there's a bit of a story attached to this guitar. You might have seen my film, Denmark Street Guitar Safari. I went to London with my Epiphone Carina Flying V and traded it for this with Mike McWilliams from the Upstairs to the Right Music YouTube channel. Uh, he'd bought this over from Holland where, where he's based and, and obviously he'd discovered the Stoner brand and the Vox Humana company and he owned a couple when he owned this one and, an, and another one. And um, we agreed on a trade because uh, I, I fancied this and he fancied my, my Epiphone. So uh, I 
bought this home that day and um, it ended up costing me, well, the, the Epiphone had cost me, end of the day, 850 English pounds. So that's what this owes me, which I think is a, is a good deal. This originally sold for 899 euros. There's the uh, proof of that. It says out of stock, that's because it's here. So let's have a closer look. It's got a mahogany body. Here you go. There's a, you can see the seam down there. So it's a two-piece mahogany body. And it's a two-piece mahogany neck. I say that because I can see a, a step joint there, but I can't see any scarf joint, and I can't even see the wings on the side of the headstock like you know Gibsons have. I'm not 100% certain of the origin of the body and neck on this. Mike had originally told me they imported them from Japan, which kind of makes sense, maybe. Open book headstock, Japan, Tokai, perhaps. But anyway, I'm going to try. I want to get in touch with Vox Humana to maybe confirm that. But they're closed at the moment. I looked on the website. They're open at one o'clock today, lunchtime. So we'll call them later. And hopefully at the end of this film, we can fill in some blanks, uh, such as things like that. So anyway, mahogany body, mahogany neck of unknown origin, maple cap, traditional Les Paul. And this is, um, I'm almost certain, a maple veneer on the top here. Um, but it's cool. I was initially, when I first saw this guitar, I was initially thinking, oh, I bet that's heavy. There's always going to be something, isn't there? But uh, let's weigh it. Here we go. Yeah, not only is it a looker, it's eight pounds seven ounces, which of course is three point eight four kilograms. There you go. You know I love a light Les Paul, and I think that's just the perfect weight. Eight and a half pounds. Happy days. Let's get the strings off and go further. Let's start with the old fingerboard. This is rosewood. Rosewood board. Look at that. It looks nice, doesn't it? Nice rosewood board. Lovely old chunky frets. I suppose they're medium jumbo, aren't they? But they're, um, they're fret over binding, as you can see. And they're very well finished. Yeah, proper, proper Great job on that. Nice, no, no issues with the, the binding joining or not joining the, the neck, if you know what I mean. Yeah, good job, looks nice. The neck feels like a real nice, I th I'm, I'm gonna say a mix between 50s and 60s. It's a nice, comfortable C shape. Let's have a look at the uh, profile and measurements up on the screen now. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. And we've just discovered it's quite dramatically asymmetrical. There you go. It's a Tusk XL nut. Very good. And I'm thinking these are Goto Japan tuners. They look they certainly look like ones I've recently bought for other projects. And I'm saying that because it has got a Goto bridge. Here you go. So I'm um, thinking maybe, maybe they'd be Goto, Goto or Faber. But I think they look like Goto. Tailpiece, I'm not sure, doesn't say unbranded. It's a sort of, uh, let's weigh that. 73 grams. So, yeah, there's it's just like a standard import one, I think that, isn't it? Okay. And the bridge posts, incidentally, are also the, the import size ones, six mil posts with the bushings going into the body. Let's just leave that off for a minute. Um, okay. Pickups. These are, according to the website, Tone Driver Alnico 5 PAF pickups. It's got two volume, it's got two tone. And as we'll see in a minute, 
It's got coil splits on both pickups, push pulls on the tone. And these are what they call tunable coil splits, which means you can adjust the amount of split, I think. Let's just take some pickup readings. We'll start with the bridge and we're on 7.92K. The inductance is 4.44 Henry's. Over to the neck, 7.93K, 4.42 Henry's. So they're broadly the same, aren't they? Let's take a middle reading for the sake of it. 3.96 kilo ohms. Okay, let's have a look underneath them. Here we go. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, that looks quite handmade. That you can see it's got a, a long neck tenon, but it doesn't go all the way to there. And it's got a screw there. I wonder what that's for. You would obviously be limited to how low you could screw the pickup down because of that. I well, I really don't know what that's all about. Is it? Uh, hmm. <laughs> wonder what that's for okay that's a mystery <laughs> it, it definitely suggests human intervention doesn't it okay Let's see what's <laughs> see if it's the same here no that hasn't got a screw Got some pencil marks, measurements, but that's that's it. So I'll just actually show you. The pickups are identified HAF V M three two one oh one and they're both the same, so I do think those pickups are identical. Here you go. All right, well, I don't know about that screw. Don't know. I'm thinking, is it is it to help earth it to the body? It, is it to stabilize it? Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm guessing stabilize. I don't know. I don't know. Anyone? <laughs> Let's screw those back and then... We'll have a look under there. Quick look inside the switch there. Three-way switch. It's like a mechanical switchcraft style. And here inside the control cavity, as you can see, proper copper shielding throughout and on the cover there. We can see CTS 500K pots on the volumes. Um, four conductor wire on both of the pickups because they go into these push pulls which um i've got orange drop capacitors as you can see and these push pulls have got tunable coil splits you can see there they've got a little uh slot for a screwdriver to turn it you go well that's almost off they turn yeah, almost 360 degrees. So, and apparently that affects the amount of split. So it should affect the tone. So what we'll do is, what we'll do now is we'll put the strings back on, plug it in, and we'll have to have a little experiment with that, won't we, and see how much difference to the tone it makes in practice. Oh, because I've never... Well, I've never seen that before. I know it is, it's not that uncommon, is it? 
on some of those modern guitars, but okay. So we'll leave that cover off and put some strings on, come back and plug it in and see what it sounds like. Do it. <laughs> That's the bridge pickup, no pedals. That's the neck pickup. So I'm smiling because I, I I just think this guitar, well, it feels really good in it, and I think it sounds really good as well. The pickup readings were fairly, sort of on you know the low side, or what you'd call the low side, and they sound great. This is just. I mean, that's cranked. It's got great sustain, this guitar. <laughs> Do you hear that? It's got that kind of bloom going on. That's what they call it, isn't it? And there are no pedals on, so this is just going into the Princeton 65 as always. I've got some pedals on the board, which I'm going to use in a little bit. I've got a soul food on the board. I've got a rat on the board. And I've added something today because, oh, we're doing the old greeny thing, aren't we? And this hasn't got an out of phase position. Although it's got coil splits, it hasn't got out of phase. So um, I've added a cock fight, which is a cocked wah effect. I mean, you can do it with a wah wah and you just, like, you know, Mick Ronson used to do it, just keep it in one position and you get that sort of out of phasey sound, that's what it is, isn't it? Out of phasey, really. But this cockfight, I'll show you it. So so we have got the out of phase position. Um, this is the middle position on the pickups, <laughs> as it is at the moment.
This is the cockfight. There you go. That's quite a little versatile little thing that. I'll show you a shot of that. It's an electro harmonics pedal. I don't think it was expensive. Electro harmonics pedals generally aren't. You will find out I've got quite a lot of them because they're, they're pretty, you know, they're not cheap, but they're not, you know, they're not like those silly expensive pedals. I mean, I never spend proper money on pedals. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really into pedals. I just, you know, soul food I use all the time. Cheapest, cheapest chips, kind of a, a trans, yeah, I think it's a transparent style, clon style overdrive, isn't it? The soul food. Great, it's less than 50 quid, I think. I use it all the time. This cockfight, I can't remember how much it was, but it does this anyway. Well, that's one of the things it does. It's got lots of knobs on it and it's got some switches on it as well. But I've set it up like that and I'm gonna leave it like that today. And I'm gonna add the rat to it as well and get a bit of I'll show you why. Let's have a quick look at these coil splits and, and see if we can hear what they do. So this is the bridge pickup with the full coil. Split. So you can hear the difference there. And that's with the... Uh, it's this one, isn't it? Fully anti-clockwise. If you turn it clockwise fully, like this. It sort of turns it off, doesn't it? So let's see what it sounds like in the middle. That's about there. You might be able to hear a difference, but I can't. So. Yeah. Let's try the bridge of the neck. That 
that's quite a nice split that. Again, that's with it in anti-clockwise, which I'd call off, but yeah. And again, if you turn it up to fully clockwise, it's, there's very little going on there. Halfway. Yeah, so you can fine tune them, but in reality, it's kind of a bit on or off, really, isn't it? There you go. I mean, I'm not a fan of cold splits anyway, as you probably know. It's a funny old game this because I'm here week in week out playing different guitars and reviewing guitars and I suppose over a period I've learnt to rely on my instinct um, you know and what I think of a guitar when I'm playing it I mean obviously you have good days and bad days you feel different about different things depending on what day of the week it is but today I'm confident enough to say that I think this is a remarkable guitar. I really do. I mean, it's quite unique to start with anyway. It's remarkable to start with because I think it's one of only a handful that Vox Humana have made. There's a, it's about half a dozen on their website. I'll put a link in the description box to their website, so check it out. There's about half a dozen on their website, including this one. They're all sold but one. I think there's one still for sale, a black one. So if you fancy that getting quick. So I, I don't really know what the deal is with this brand. Stoner is a brand, uh, a, a project, I suppose, that Vox Humana have um, done. <laughs> I was trying to think, what's the word? Done. Yeah, something they've done. They did it. <laughs> well, they did this. And... Um, I've not been able to find out any more information, to be honest with you. I've tried to call them a few times. Couldn't get through yesterday. I was going to call again today, but I found they're closed. There's a, I put their opening hours up on the screen again. As you can see, they're open, according to this, about 11 hours a week. So <laughs> that's quite a nice little job to have, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> so I, I don't know any more about the origin of the, the body and neck, as I was talking about earlier or any more about the pickups. All I know about the pickups is that they sell these on their website and they're, they're cheap pickups. I mean, about 40 euros a piece, these. And, um, well, I'm, here's the thing. I would, my, my inclination would be to change these because I've, got a, I've actually got a set of Monty's uh, Peter Green pickups. I was thinking about putting them in here. But to be honest with you, this sounds today to my ears so good I don't think I will as I wouldn't want to change anything about this I would say I'm not going to use the coil splits they're a pain in the ass. I would change or actually I would change on this is the tone pots because they don't work especially well so maybe I'll lose the coil splits but again if a guitar's doing what it did today why do it why bother just leave it alone and enjoy it as it is because it felt great it felt it 
it's always felt great, this guitar. It kind of, you know, I mean, it happened all quick. I did a trade, got rid of the Epiphone Flying V. You know, I was pleased to get rid of it. I'm pleased to get this as a trade. I bought it home and I had a bit of a play. I took it home straight away. I had a bit of a play. I thought, oh, this is really good. And I put it to one side. That was in months ago, wasn't it now? And I haven't, I haven't done anything. Well, I haven't had a chance to do anything with it until now. And again, I think, yeah, actually, there's something really nice about this guitar. My only criticisms of this are a couple of little criticisms. The headstock, open book, did I mention that? Looks like it's been painted black paint, a little bit orange peely, and the decals on there. I've got a, quite a pronounced line around them. You, you can see those. So maybe a few more coats of lacquer on there. Or maybe the decals are a little bit too thick, but that's just thought I'd mention that. Not a big deal, but you know, I've been you know singing the praises of the guitar, so you got you got to balance it up with a little bit of negatives, haven't you? And the pickup rings there, they look a bit cheap, don't they? They could be a weird, odd colour. I might be inclined to change those for something that matches the binding a little bit better. Apart from that, I love it. And I like the, as I say, I think it's a veneer, but I do like the veneer finish. I think it looks very authentic. I do think it looks authentic, potentially a little bit more authentic than the pictures of the new Epiphone Kirk Hammett green eh, that I've seen. And that's a little bit uniform, isn't it? Which is not, it's not really my, it's not a look that I'm a big fan of that. I prefer the more randomness of something like this. But anyway. So this is my greenie. Have you got one? Have you got a new Epiphone on the way? Or are you thinking about getting one? Or have you got a, an alternative like me? Have you got maybe maybe one of those vintage brand knockoff ones, the cheap ones? They're good. They're pretty good. Maybe you've got a Gibson or another Epiphone that you've modified. Maybe you've done a magnet flip, a knob switch on another guitar so you've got your own one and saved yourself a few quid as well. Let me know in the comments, as always. Let me know. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of everything? <laughs> Let me know. I will. I do want to know. So, yeah, do it. In the comments section. That's where all that stuff goes. Uh, and that's it for now. Let's wrap it up. Let's all go and, um, well, practice, really. That's probably the most important thing, isn't it? Uh, thanks for your company this week. Very much appreciated. Same time next week. Same place. I look forward to it. We'll do it all again. All right. Cheers for now. Ta-da.